also uh welcome all right uh off to uh the races here it is wednesday june 30th so last day of the quarter and a half of the year is already gone uh, so let's uh jump through what we have uh, for today i'll try to uh keep up with letting people in and uh but if i get uh distracted who, who knows you know what, Igor, I will make you a co-host as well. Um, so if you see anybody in the uh, waiting room, just let them in. Yeah, we'll do. And then you can obviously jump in with whatever you have. I'm just going to hit uh, some things this morning. So let's just take a look at the markets. Uh, again, yesterday hit another all-time high here on uh, the SPX. And, uh, you know, sold off a little bit uh, during the day, but we've seen... Yeah, that this market is super strong. Uh, it's been uh, in a squeeze the last few days anyway, moving higher. No reason to think that it won't go higher again uh, today or anytime soon. Uh, I still think we're overextended and we'll uh, continue to treat things that way as I'm in a little bit of a cautionary but bullish uh, strategy. So we're going to keep by uh, utilizing all of our current strategies. I am going to be making some shifts to what I'm doing. Uh, I have way, way, way too many positions on. Uh, it's the most positions I've carried all year, which is a gigantic red flag sentiment indicator for everybody here. <laughs> that If I have this many individual stock trades on, uh, it actually makes me too nervous. There was a lot of really good setups, so I couldn't help it. Uh, and it's been a good month overall. So a really good month, uh, hard to hard to lose, uh, but things are, uh, which is not a good thing either. So I've got way too many stocks on. I'm gonna look to pair those back in the next three days uh, as we move forward. Uh, I'm gonna stick to a lot more uh, SPX and derivatives for the month of, uh, month of July. So that's where we're going to look to go in July uh, as we move forward. So uh, that's the plan. A lot of stuff with uh, SPY, MES, uh, ES, and SPX uh, as we go. So that'll be uh, the plan. And I'm going to try to wind some of the stuff that I have down. Uh, uh, Dennis or Captain Jones and I have been doing a lot of back and forth. On the, I think we're very much on the same page with a lot of uh, what we do, but I've got way too many trades on. They're all really good, but I'm going to start to pare some of those down and stick to more of the S&P 500 derivatives. Uh, and then, you know, Dennis, if you've got some comments and you want to jump in today, uh, certainly feel free to do so. You've got really good stuff. Uh, so anyway, uh, S&P, it's actually up slightly today. Um, if we take a quick look just at where we are, um, and then before I move back to evaluating um, everything else, uh, here's where we are. We are about a half an hour in. Ticks have been largely positive on the day, so pretty positive day on ticks. Advanced decliners almost dead flat on the day, opened up, sold off, back to the median line. Uh, we got about 20, we're about 20 stocks down uh, from that. Uh, opening range, pretty nice opening range, ran up pull back a tad, and then here's where we are um, now on the 15. Looks like things are headed down a bit here. So stochastic momentum pointing down and looks like we're crossing over here uh, as well. Doesn't mean it can't uh, reverse, but maybe a little bit of selling to start the day. Uh, and then I'm gonna pop back to the overall chart. Since I'm not in any zero DTE stuff, I don't really watch those as much except uh, it helps me time some of the entry points on the MES trades uh, during the day a little bit. When you're trading 60 days, days out, I don't know that it matters, but eh, an extra 25 uh, cents here or there can pay off uh, on these MES trades um, that we have. So anyway, S&P, all-time high yesterday, just off of it today, relaxing a bit. Um, NASDAQ, same thing. So tech stocks continuing to crank up to new highs, hit another one yesterday. Um, as you go through you know, new high, then intraday new high, intraday and new high, sold off a bit, 
new high, new high. I mean, it's just an unrelenting march up, uh, but internals are still pretty strong. And if we look at the Russell uh, a bit here uh, on things, this is the weaker of the indexes, not setting new highs. Uh, the last new high on Russell was set back here uh, in March. So been in a really good sideways trading range here. Uh, the only time Russell goes up is when I put on a tiered rut butterfly and then it just runs straight for, you know, uh, a week or two. But uh, other than that, I mean, we're right in the dead center here. Uh, this is not a bad spot for a tiered rut fly. I don't even believe I said that. So, uh, but Igor, I think you've got one on um, currently and see how, you know, I think it's a good spot in here. Uh, so if you're following those, I think they're great trades. Um, <laughs> I've had good success. I just like to bitch about the, the Russell. Uh, all right. And then take a look at the VIX. So VIX yesterday hit a low of 14 on the day uh, yesterday. So new high yesterday, VIX setting a, a, a new low. This is a really good opportunity. So I've been loading up on VIX and I've got uh, quite a few uh, long calls as well as a VIX uh, VIX spread uh, that's on. So right now, the, our VIX spread, we did the 2025 uh, in here. I'm going to throw another one on today. We're going to go out about uh, 60, 50, 60 days out and put on another risk volatility spread uh, about 60 days out. Um, I'd like to do it when I'm under 16. We popped up a little bit above it, but I think relatively we're, we're okay. Uh, then yesterday was the better day to do it, but I'm still going to uh, pop that on today, especially since um, the S&P is now moving higher a little bit on the day. So uh, we won't wait too long to get this on uh, today. I think, you know, VIX is setting up um, here nicely, new lows. It's a good time to put some, some risk on. Uh, I'm pretty nervous about this market. Uh, we'll keep making money and we're up nicely today. So we're up 0.6% uh, uh, on the day. Uh, already on our trades. And we're going to look again to take many of them off as we uh, drop down. Taking a quick look at the skew, blasted to a new all time high two days ago uh, uh, on the 20th. Well, actually, that was Friday, uh, the 171 almost, then dropped all the way down to a 162. Uh, and then yesterday, a 164, basically. So skew continues to be just at an all time high. Uh, on skew, it's just been so elevated the last week or two, uh, giving us really good out of the money put premium. Uh, but it's certainly indicating that there's a lot of people buying, uh, you know, some of those out of the money puts. Uh, and it's a very high indicator that we have a lot of tail risk in this market. And uh, we'll keep watching uh, that. But uh, we're setting up for tail risk. Um, here, skew is at all time highs or just gigantic highs in here. So we'll keep watching that. If we look at the uh, 50 day moving average, how many of the uh, 50 day moving average? Well, yeah, 50 day moving average on the S&P to see how many stocks are above it. It's still just struggling to even get to half. So we are up to a whopping 48 percent today. 47%. So only 47% of the stocks in the S&P uh, are above their 50 day moving average, which means you are not getting broad participation um, in this all in this rally. Uh, so it's all contained in the fat mang stocks the uh, that we'll take a quick look at. Uh, gold, I'm going to actually jump through some of these. Well, let's, uh, let's just take a look at the futures uh, in gold. Had a sell off yesterday. We've got this uh, put spread on. I'm still leaving it on uh, for right now uh, on gold. Uh, we've got 27 days. I feel okay, but uh, the only reason I'm leaving this put spread on and gold again today, just sideways um, action slightly down, is a pretty good reversal looking signal here on MACD, although stochastics and RSI not confirming. Um, that finally a yellow bar uh, on the squeeze. And if we take a look at the uh, 
the mobo bands as well certainly they're red but they're certain they're getting a lot smaller uh here and the stochastic momentum is trying to point up and it hasn't gotten there yet but we'll wait to see if we can uh get that pointed up as soon as we get a point up like this and they separate uh here then that's where i'll feel pretty comfortable uh, with that trade but being down here at these lows and being at this support level it's okay with me so i followed dennis into this trade and uh we'll stick there the one thing to notice too is if you look at the psr which is uh the parabolic um reversal uh here is the closer the dot gets to the top of the bar the more likely you have for that reversal to happen so the reversal hasn't happened yet but you can see here that hey we're going up 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 dots are getting closer touching the bottom of the tail dots are getting closer and the closer that dot gets then boom the reversal happens um, on it so it's a good uh, indicator that hey we're getting closer 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 to the stock so when we, get, when we get close, we get a reversal, and that's where you get the run, and then we look to get out on the reversal potentially. It's just another indicator, but this is the closest that the um, PSAR dots are have gotten to the stock, um, except maybe back in, now even this wasn't good, uh, except back in here. This was the best indicator that a reversal could have happened uh, and did not. Um, so doesn't automatically mean that's going to happen, but when we get closer on these down moves uh, to it here, maybe another couple days or so, if this thing continues to move sideways on gold. Uh, so I'm still sticking with gold uh, here as we look at it. And when we take a look at the uh, expected move for the week on gold as well, we banged off of it yesterday and banged off of it today. So uh, we're really sitting at the expected move uh, on gold for the week doesn't mean we can't pop it um, but if you look at this previous week we did not break it now this previous week was when we destroyed it um, but um, it's been able to you know pretty much be contained except for you know two times in the last five uh, except you know back here so once it starts to get wild and woolly breaking them then that's when frequent breaks breaks can happen but now that we've had a couple bigger breaks um, let's see if we can stay inside the expected move, which again, being at the bottom of the expected move, it's also good. So that's why I'm keeping that gold uh, trade on. And then if we take a look at silver, pretty similar chart, you can paste it over gold. Um, however, silver, a lot better looking recovery. RSI is really starting to climb a lot more uh, on it. It's back up to 39. If it gets to 50, I'm gonna be much more positive on silver starting to see some reversal in the momentum here. And then if we take a quick look at uh, the MOBO, or I'm sorry, the, well, the MOBO's almost green. So it's almost ready to fire on the daily uh, long. If we look at the different time lengths uh, here, we're still red on the weekly, which we won't get, we won't turn green until somewhere around 28 on silver. So it's not gonna give us a real buy signal, but uh, certainly a reversal opportunity. And then if we look at the uh, two hour, it fired green. If we look at the four hour, okay, it firing green today. Uh, so there's some opportunities here um, on silver. So silver looks interesting, a lot better looking than gold. And you've got the PSAR signal reversal here. So stochastic momentum pointing up, you got the reversal signal. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity uh, to look and nibble uh, a little bit. And uh, let's get out of this and back to where we were. Uh, interesting. So I think this is a really interesting spot here. You're not stacked. Nothing looks perfect. Would I throw the entire uh, horse farm into this? No, but I think this looks a lot better than gold to sell a put spread uh, on it. I think it's a nicer looking reversal. Uh, let's take a quick look into the land of excitement of bonds, the treasury bonds, uh, continuing to stair step their way higher. So higher low, higher low. Okay, higher high, higher high, and watching this go. So bonds continuing to recover, still in a long downtrend, but this downtrend line, I think I took this out a year or so. Um, I don't know why this thing got so funky. I think I drew it on the weekly, that's why. Um, so if we take a look at this downtrend line, 
uh, that we have in here. Uh, so stay, starting back here in August, and then when that uh, the top happened, we bounced off of it, bounced, bounce, 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 came up, bounced and failed again. Big crater, slowly recovering its way up. Not you know, almost a cup and handle opportunity here, which didn't materialize. But you're getting several uh, you know double bottoms, a lot of really good support in here uh, on bonds. So I think bonds breaking the downtrend line, which one day does not make a trend break. Uh, but with the exception of the 200 hanging way out up here, you've got, uh, you know, you've got most of your moving averages stacked uh, and the 50 about to cross the 100 here. So bonds moving up. And what's that mean for yields? That means yields are going to hell in a handbasket. So uh, yields are going down here and we've got some support in this line. This could be a break of yields. If yields continue to drop, techs are gonna to continue to crank. Uh, so bonds are rising, yields are dropping, techs are gonna rise. Uh, and when we look at techs, that's exactly what's been uh, moving the, the markets. We'll take a look at some of the sectors uh, in a minute. In fact, let's look at some sector ETFs in here. Uh, let's shorten the time period a bit. Uh, so let's look at where we are. Um, so here's the uh, consumer discretionaries just bouncing and running higher on consumer discretionaries, squeeze fired, you're four days into the squeeze. Uh, so consumer discretionaries looking pretty good. Uh, Amazon and Tesla both up mirroring that. So uh, that's the XLY, uh, which we do have a poor man's covered call on. For those of you that are maybe new, not familiar, uh, we own or I own whatever the 140, uh, long leap here and we've been selling premium against it in fact uh, this other line is way out of whack right now uh, we've actually sold the 179 it was the most recent one uh, we have sold so we're right at our sold call it's all good i wait till friday if i'm in the red i roll it out and up and or i roll it out anyway if i'm below it we just keep reducing the cost uh, or using the income on this one. So this has been a hugely profitable trade. Uh, this uh, we, we purchased this at $25.90 down here, and it's at $40.22. So you almost have a 100% winner on the long, and then I'm pretty even and flat on the shorts here, but which is fine with me. It's stacked, looks good. So consumer discretionaries uh, look good. Let's take a look at financials here. Uh, as we look at financials, not quite stacked. Uh, things have uh, broken down a bit uh, in the last uh, four trading sessions or so, but you've got a really nice looking reversal here, uh, even on the squeeze, which again, this is not a, you know, a, something that we, we pay a lot of attention to, but I like to see the fact that this is mirroring the MACD. Uh, so RSI almost back to 50. So financials, banging around in here trying to recover even though rates are going lower and if we take a look at the um, the daily info here there's our stomo so this was definitely pointing up it broke through the 40 and ran nicely so this was a really good bottoming trade and then you've got the PSR reversal signal the last two days uh, so we're good to go uh, on financials and just to take a look this is really interesting. So you're sitting inside the cloud uh, here on the uh, Ichimoku cloud and maybe really a break of this, uh, you know, a break through the cloud could give us some uh, additional uh, propellant to, to move higher. And then taking a look just really quick where we are uh, on, the, on the daily. Uh, we've moved, sold off a couple of days uh, here, trying to bounce a little bit and didn't quite hit the expected moves. Uh, on there. Uh, real quick, XLK. So looking at the technologies, I mean, just ridiculously cranking higher. It's long into this squeeze. Long, 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 long. Uh, and I'm now looking to see you know, how far it can stay that way. But once you stay up above here, you had a little break down here, but back above, and it's just stayed positive on the stochastic momentum. So momentum is still good really don't see any breakdown happening uh, of any major proportions. And you are a long way 
from the reversal dot um, on the parabolic. So uh, this you got close here. So you can see down, 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 down. These dots got really close and we reversed. This is a long way away. Uh, doesn't mean that we don't cross top and go here, but I don't see technology stopping and bonds yields dropping. Technology is going to continue to, to rock and roll. Uh, uh, so here on the XLI, this one's interesting. Um, it's getting really close to potentially reversing uh, here on the industrials. Uh, nothing exciting for me there. Uh, materials, pretty similar, just trying to bottom out, reversing uh, energy. Uh, here, energy continues to um, you know, really move sideways here. Um, starting to see some of the uh, uh, compression dots uh, on it as well. Consumer staples, moving higher, nothing exciting for me. Healthcare though, looks really good uh, moving up here. And then lastly, utilities, just sucking wind. So bonds are dropping, there's no place to go uh, and, uh, and get any money out of anything here. So uh, utilities not seeming to, uh, to want to play ball here as well. All right, let's look at some of the trades that we have on. And no, let me double check. Oh, this is why. All right, so let's uh, look at some of the current trades we have on. Uh, so in ES, uh, right now we are uh, strictly in that for the wide, or not the wide, uh, I'm confusing the WAB with the, uh, with with my uh, huge, giant, uh, catastrophic loss trades uh, that are in here. So uh, we own a lot. We've been selling uh, roughly 100 day out uh, puts at a ratio of three of those. Uh, and then as those things sell down, then I'm buying five of the uh, uh, of the long puts uh, in there and then slowly doing it. So right now I have a ratio, I have 15 shorts on and I have 25 longs on, uh, on ES, which has given me um, really a, a giant disaster hedge. Uh, so giving me good uh, negative Delta uh, on that. And if we crash down, signal something ridiculous, uh, then we're hedged. Uh, for any kind of a black swan event. I'll be updating that trade a little bit more. Gold, we already talked about. The MES trades, uh, we're still doing these every single day. Uh, and I've started to add the call side. So uh, I've stayed away from the uh, stayed away from the put or the call side for a long time as we've just moved up and up and up, but things are just starting to go a little more sideways. And we're getting a little far into some of these things. Uh, again, am I? Are we going to tip over? I don't think so. As I mentioned earlier, I think we're still too far from these reversal signals here. So I'm not worried about now. If this comes down and meets the signal, then fine. Uh, but right now, nothing uh, lending me to believe that you know massive sell-offs happening tomorrow. But I don't like it. Uh, so let's we'll keep an eye here, but we're going to continue to sell strangles now at the 60 day um, mark on MES. So you're going to see as I put on um, the daily trades, I'm selling a put 10% uh, out of the money and I'm selling a call 10% out of the money. And I'll be taking those off when the time comes. Otherwise, I'm selling the puts right now uh, or I'm, I'm buying back those puts. Uh, on a daily basis, and I buy the most uh, the most profitable put each day, which is, for the most part, the oldest. But uh, sometimes they skip around as the market bobs up and down. In here, you get some opportunities to get some additional premium uh, and trade. But uh, hugely profitable trade. And if we take a look at where we are for the month on those, uh, I shared uh, those things with you guys the other day. Uh, but I've been doing, except for the first two that I closed this month on the 1st and 2nd of June, I moved to doing two a day. Uh, so I'm just sticking to small, small lots, 
two MES trades, you know, two, two contracts a day. Uh, we're now up $4,796 on the month, an average of $228 per day, and an average premium collection of 84% um, on each of these that we uh, are closing. So today is the last day. I uh, probably won't get a, a 200 and some dollar winner as I close. We're going to be closing probably the 37.90 put, probably for about 162 bucks. And it's going to get me close, but not, I won't hit the 5,000. So 47.96 plus like hopefully today about $162 more. I'm going to end the month up 4,958 bucks doing two contracts of these and having a total capital um, buying power used of about $15,000 on average. So not bad making five grand on $15,000 hold on my account. I do, you know, I don't use all of my money set aside in case things go screwy, but I'm pretty happy with the hedges um, that I have on as well. So we're going to talk more hedge today. Uh, I know this is getting long, so I'm already 30 minutes in. Uh, okay, Apple. Uh, so Apple, we have the double calendar running on Apple. Uh, we'll be rolling those on Friday. Apple just continuing to sail higher. Uh, we're getting to the you know closer to the top of maybe some resistance here. We are long into this squeeze uh, on Apple, uh, continuing to bust through expected move week after week after week. So three straight weeks of breaking the expected move to the upside, uh, which not always a good thing. Uh, and if we look at uh, things here, we've been strongly in the stochastic momentum for a while uh, and PSAR is still moving up and not getting close enough yet, but uh, uh, Apple's still gonna go. Uh, so Apple still has a little room to go. It's okay for for what we're doing so the double calendar i would prefer not to see this when you've got a double calendar but this is totally fine uh, and we're 51 days out on the longs uh, which are actually profitable uh, so the longs are up uh, nicely right now anyway uh, so the shorts are the only things getting beat up a little bit and if we start to pull back down it's going to help those short calls that we're rolling out so oh all good on apple not making any changes there except i just want to get out of some of these trades um, that we have so i can move uh, to some different things in july uh, now uh, airbnb entering a squeeze things are getting a little bit more exciting. Uh, so let's see where we go, but really tight Bollinger bands here. Squeeze is dictated showing that as well. We broke the downtrend, uh, or I'm sorry, we broke this uptrend. We also broke this downtrend, but not, you know, not to any great degree. Um, here we've just pretty much moved sideways. So this might be a nice area, uh, but our Airbnb trade we're up on, it expires in two days. Uh, we did the 145, 150 uh, on this. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here at 147.80. So if not, you know, we paid $2.32. We're at 240. Uh, and it's nicely inside of our uh, range. So that's all good. Uh, AMC. Uh, so here's just one of the stupid things that we like to do with, uh, with some butterflies. Uh, here, uh, this thing has really been consolidating. Uh, it's an interesting looking trade. So take a, you know, so we've got a little triangle action working here um, on this thing. So uh, it's going to go one way or the other. And let's see what happens. So we're in a squeeze now. You're getting uh, some more momentum here. MACD is still at lows, which is not thrilling. Uh, for AMC, and I don't know that fundamentals or technicals that do much of anything, but you did get a PSR reversal here. Let's see, the dots got close. Boom, we reversed. We got the signal to get in. Uh, potentially here, we're dead flat on the stochastic momentum. So just some sideways movement here. Uh, I've got one trade, that one fly that's going to expire Friday. That's pretty much just going to be a loser. But we put on another trade here. Um, at the 6570, uh, 6575.80. If for some reason this thing decides to just rock it out of here in the next nine days, we'll make some money on it. 
uh, you know, it's worth a shot, you know, worth a couple bucks throwing it at it and uh, see where, uh, see where things go. Uh, Amazon, I don't have a trade, but Gabe did put on a iron fly here. Um, so Gabe's iron fly on Amazon. Uh, I think he put it on around 33.70. I jumped in with him at 33.20. It's at 32.97 today because Amazon's making a big move um, higher. But you've got weakening uh, momentum on this the squeeze and MACD. So I think it's a good opportunity. I when uh, I wanted to know why he got in. You also see that the PSR reversal. It's been going on for a couple of days uh, and stochastic momentum has been pointing down. Uh, could reverse and, and move higher, but uh, hey, why, why not? If this thing can just hang in here a little while longer, uh, then be a nice iron fly trade. I think uh, it was only a couple day trade anyway. Uh, and it's up, uh, it's up a bit today. Uh, so it's already up. He's looking, I think, at 10%, which would be what, a $3 move. So if this thing gets down to 30 or so, or somewhere in that range, I think uh, that'll be good. So looking at it like a 10% around that one. Uh, Boeing, so we're in Boeing with a butterfly, 245, 255, 265 symmetrical fly up in here. Boeing's had a couple tougher days and now it's up today. So uh, tried to move up yesterday, sold back off, moving, trying to bounce again today. Uh, getting, um, you know, it's fired long, uh, a little bit down here, not anything major uh, on it. And if we look at the reversal, we do have a downside uh, PSR reversal on this Domo pointing down. Doesn't look great uh, for our Boeing uh, fly, uh, but, you know, we're only down a little bit on this thing. It could certainly run up into here and we have nine days left on Boeing. Uh, let's see, uh, Beyond Techs uh, here. So Beyond Tech, uh, this is our put spread. We're, but we're hanging above the put spread. We've got 16 days to go. Um, it's a profitable winner. So we sold a put spread on this thing at the money, uh, thinking that we were going to continue to move higher. We've now entered into a little bit of a squeeze here. And if we take a look at where things are, uh, you're still in this downtrend, but man, this dot is right at the top there. So we could get a nice reversal. Stomo is not telling us that we are, but the PSR, we could get a reversal signal anytime now, I think, on Beyond Tech. So uh, we're in that one with the uh, put spread. It's profitable. Um, that's all good. Uh, BTX in here. Uh, we are just traveling sideways. We did a 15, 20. Uh, call this thing's uh, call spread. It's sitting at uh, 18 bucks right now, which is three dollars into our 15 to 20 call spread. We put it on for buck 75. It's sitting at 218. So we got a winner going here, uh, and we'll watch how things go. But you did get the piece on reversal here. You've got Mobo firing uh, long on the two hour. We're negative, so the two hours were down. So we don't have a long signal. Uh, overall on MOBO, we're green still uh, on the four, but we're not on the two hour on this thing. So uh, we'd want to see this thing get back up to almost 20, 21 to give us that official uh, signal, but that's not our goal on this thing anyway. Uh, let's see what happens on this. Uh, we're, we've got the call spread. It's all good. 16 days to go. We've got a profit in it. Could take it off and just you know, take take the profit and run. Uh, CCIV, we do have a call spread on this one, the twenty five thirty. Uh, this one we've got uh, gains on as well. Taking a quick look where we are. Uh, PSR reversal, moving higher. Stomo pointing higher. If we look at where we are, we are breaking through the cloud right now. This is a really good sign uh, on CCIV. Uh, this thing could run a bit. Uh, so that's our goal. We've got 51 days in trade on this thing. So we're out a bit um, on that. I think uh, this is a trade, I think, on and head on uh, here. And uh, I'm just long shares uh, of this thing so far. It's up nicely. You're breaking through the cloud uh, on Comcast. 
And if we take a look at where things are, uh, MA is pretty well stacked, breaking up above the 21 and the eight. MACD, stochastics, all pointing higher. You're in a squeeze. You're more than five days in. Uh, this looks good. So I really like uh, Comcast here um, from where it is sitting in our squeeze. Uh, DraftKings, so we got profits on that one. DraftKings, another one that we're profitable on. We sold the 49 put. See the orange line here? Um, so that's our put. We're nicely above that right now. DraftKings, at MACD, RSI, Stochastics, all moving higher. Not stacked on the MAs, which is not my favorite thing. And you've got the 200 looming uh, here. But we've got a nice profit going and we're getting really close on this PSAR. So um, it's, it's in the zone that we could see some reversal uh, coming on it soon. They're dead center in the clouds. So we have a ways to go to break through that um, as well. But if we're looking at the two hour green on the MOBO, four hour, we're green on the MOBO. And then if we look at the weekly, uh, we're still red, but we are right at the top of this. So uh, we just need to hit um, uh, the, the high of this week, which was about $53. So a break of 53 is a buy signal on DraftKings. We're already in with a put spread, uh, but I like DraftKings here. Uh, taking a look, uh, expected move is up here around 54 for the week. And uh, yeah, doing totally fine. Uh, so uh, I like DraftKings in here. I think a break of this 200 uh, is a really great signal. Um, that 53, as I mentioned, is the MOBO buy signal as well. So if we that, that's the 200 and the MOBO buy signal, a break of 53. I think DraftKings has a really good upside uh, looking uh, potential. So keep an eye on it. Uh, and, and see where we go. Uh, we are early stages of uh, some light squeeze action uh, here. Uh, IWM, and I got a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm sorry if this is going long with you guys. Uh, we've got too many trades on, like I said. Uh, IWM, this is a hedge that we've had on. Um, it's doing really well. Uh, we bought the 140s, uh, uh, IWM, uh, am I looking, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, so we, I'm sorry, we bought the 250s up in here uh, is what we bought. So you can see we bought this uh, put and we've been selling puts against it on IWM. Um, the current put um, that we're selling against it is the 230. I really didn't adjust this at all. So we've dipped down below. Now we're bouncing right around it. Uh, it's all good. Uh, that put is pretty flat down a tad. For this sold put, we'll see where we go uh, on IWM. But we own the long put. We're doing this because we wanted the negative delta. The other hedges I have are going to start to take precedence. So I'll probably pull this trade off um, at the end of this week. Uh, on it. So I don't think I need this anymore, um, which is why we're on. Uh, let's see, LRCX, um, uh, Anya, I think somebody, I'm not sure who it was, but I did a, uh, was talking about this one. Uh, I did a butterfly on this um, up in here. It looks pretty good. Um, everything's reversing, looks looks really good. And you've got the PSR reversal signal a couple of days ago, stochastic momentum pointing higher. Uh, so I think it's a good looking trade. Um, in there, so I think it's a good opportunity to get in with a some kind of a butterfly up in here. Uh, I did, of course, a broken wing, but you can do whatever uh, you choose to want to do uh, on them. Uh, our number one disappointment um, here is love. Uh, we sold the puts uh, up here at 60. Uh, so we sold a 60 put. We've tailed all the way down to the low 50s. Uh, so obviously it's been a, a losing trade, but we've been wheeling it out. Uh, we just uh, will continue to roll this thing. I don't think Love is the worst airline on the planet. I don't think it deserves this sell-off with everything else that's going on. And I think you'll start to see some recovery in this. It's just going to take us a little while. 
I am going to only going to roll if I can get decent credit out a week. If I can't, I am going to take assignment here, and then I'm going to put a strangle on this one. So I'm going to resell another uh, set of puts below uh, or right here at 50, and then I will sell calls up in here as well. Uh, so if I do get assigned, I will strangle this thing, and I will look to see that if these puts uh, down here, they're either going to make me some money. Uh, or I'm going to get assigned at 50, which is going to bring my average cost down to 55, which is what I feel I can wheel uh, pretty well. So this is why you don't go bananas with uh, all of your margin in just a few. It's just one of the stocks, and it's only a small percentage of the portfolio. So uh, that's where we are on love. Uh, Netflix, uh, this one still looks good. Uh, I think there's a uh, butterfly on in Netflix, a uh, little bit longer uh, term fly, 510, 515, 517. We're way through that butterfly. Uh, so this thing's near a, uh, a max profit, but we'll let uh, some time come off on Netflix and we'll deal with that. Nike. Uh, all right, so here's Nike, banana move. Uh, on this thing. So Nike's uh, off a little bit more today. We have a double calendar on this thing down to 130, 135 uh, here uh, on this. Uh, obviously, we're in the red a little bit. I mean, you're talking a couple hundred dollar loss on this thing on, uh, you know, per contract. So if you did small, and which is what I'm doing to play with these, it's down of a whole $248. Uh, and I have yet to really begin rolling it. Uh, so I'm still going to hang on, I think, uh, in, in this trade and watch what happens on moves like this and see how it behaves. Uh, but we've only, we've only opened this trade. We haven't rolled it yet. Uh, the roll comes Friday. Uh, we'll pick up some credit. And uh, right now, if we look to roll uh, this thing out another week, uh, on it, uh, let's see what's you know, we're going to get a really small, uh, you know, not really, small, not bad. So we're going to get a little bit of a credit um, on this one. Oh, we got a winner. I didn't even get to the trade and it's already triggered a winner. So uh, give me a second. We'll, we'll get uh, to posting a winner that just happened. All right, uh, Peloton. And the reason that we got a winner, by the way, is look what's going on in S SPY today. So Sold off a little bit and then boom, 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 boom. New highs, you know, we're running up to new highs again. So we're running up towards the new highs. Things are super strong. Ticks have been up and down. Uh, advanced decliners are rolling, but uh, we're up, which has triggered our two DTE spy butterfly for another 100% winner. I'll get to that in a moment and we'll discuss that one. Uh, all right, Peloton. So Peloton, we're in this one with a 120, 130, 135 broken wing butterfly. We're sitting right in the fly. Two days to go. This thing is at a nice winner right now. Let's see, it's a four dollars and thirty-one, and we paid one eighty-nine. Uh, so we have a hundred and twenty-eight percent winner in Peloton. Uh, we can get another sixty cents if it blows through the top, or we can get even more if it stays right in here. So here's the dilemma. Do you, you've got two days to go and you have a 128% winner. Do you leave it on and see what, you know, see where we go? The worst we can do is, it, it, well, I'll say the, if it blows through, okay, we're going to have a $5 winner. We're at $4.27 right now. Uh, so we, can, we only have a little bit more upside if it blows through. However, if it stays dead center, you got a big $10 winner on $1.89. So you got a 500% winner. Or door number three, this thing drops out of the drops out of the drops below the wing, and you have nothing. Uh, so go ahead and jump in chat. Buy or do we do we sell it? Do we hold it here? Sell it or hold it. Uh, so we got one, take the dollar. Anybody else? Take the money and run or wait two days and play for the really big money or the really big loss. Well, I have to say the really big loss. Uh, Igor, get the bag. 
uh, is it Laracom? I'm not sure. Uh, first name on that one, uh, take the money, get the bag. I'm saying, I think we get the bag. So uh, I say we take the cash. So we're going to put a trade on status, partial profit. I love the answer, but I don't have multiple contracts. Uh, but yes, if I had uh, two or th this one, I, the way I did it, I didn't, uh, I didn't throw multiple contracts, but yes, I think the partial profit, perfect, exact, perfect answer. Right now you take the hundred percent plus winner, take half off the table, let the rest ride. So you've got a free trade on that you could really pay off. Perfect answer, right answer, love the answer. Um, but uh, I don't have enough contracts. Uh, so let's see. Uh, and then now uh, Peloton pulling back uh, a bit. Uh, so we'll leave this trade on. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, it's already pulled back like 30 cents. Uh, on us for the day, but we'll leave a trade on. So I got a trade on to close Peloton uh, in here. Uh, all right, so PayPal, next one. Uh, PayPal, now here's a vertical call spread. You think this thing's profitable? Uh, so this is a $10 wide uh, that we have on. We paid $4.35. We're still sitting up here, even on a couple down days. Uh, it's a $6 or it's a $7 value right now. So we've made seven bucks uh, divided by the 435. Um, so it is a 98% winner, close to it. It doesn't sound right to me. Seven minus 435 divided by 435. Okay. Uh, I would think eight something would be a 100% winner. But anyway, uh, We've got a long call spread on, profitable, expires not for quite a while yet. Uh, this is a 51 dayer. Uh, I don't know why on earth I went out that long, uh, but it's a hugely profitable winner, almost 100% winner. Uh, it's sitting somewhere around 80% or so. I'll leave it on a little bit. Uh, the longer we can stay above, the more that the theta will improve the trade. So theta works in our favor there. Uh, ride, we did a zebra trade in Y ride. So we did the zero um, extrinsic back ratio uh, on this thing. And we did the nine and a half, 11. It's just been floundering sideways. Um, the trade is pretty much just flat right now uh, on it. PSAR is still down uh, on it, but the Stomo has been pointing up, but it's looking a little shaky on ride. Uh, right now, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but that's the zero extrinsic back ratio um, spread. Uh, SBH, uh, we sold put here down at $20. We're well above it. Um, this thing's got a little bit of time left, but it's a nice winner um, right now. So SBH is a winner. Snap, uh, in Snap, we have a 65, 75, 85 symmetrical fly. Uh, so we did the fly, I could probably indicate it on here. What was that? Oh, man. Crazy. That's a wide fly. So uh, on snap, and this thing expires in two days, uh, 65, 75, 85 uh, on it. We're in the, we're in the, inside the wings. So that's all good. Uh, on it, and it's a profitable trade. Uh, so we are up, uh, I don't know what, uh, 80 cents on a $2 uh, trade. So, uh, you know, 40% uh, right now. So we're up nicely 40%, two days to go. Uh, we'll give this thing some time, squeeze firing today. Let's get this baby up here. If we can, I don't know that we're going to hit the center of this, but ideally, if we can get to 70, um, that'll be more than 100% winner. Uh, so all we need to get to on this one is since we paid $2, uh, if we get to uh, 68, that'll give us a $4 win on a $2 trade. That'll give us a 100% winner. So another nice butterfly uh, winning trade so far, if we hang in there uh, on things. Uh, SPX, uh, we've got a calendar working. That's just 
blah fair nothing's really going great we've got a long 100 dte iron condor that thing's not doing much of anything uh, either um, as the market just does not want to chill out uh, but we got another winner today on spy so here's what we've been doing on spy and again we're 53 minutes in guys so uh, bear with me uh, i'll shut up soon uh, hopefully this is uh, something of value to you uh, uh, so bear with me as I post the trade. So we've been doing a spy call butterfly. And we've been doing these at two DTE uh, on average. Uh, we can do four DTE on Fridays. Uh, so we put this one on on Monday at 49 cents on spy. Uh, so what we've been doing is We've taken, we, we take a look at the expected moves. Uh, now this is the weekly expected, so it doesn't really matter here. Uh, well, we're gonna put another one on today. In fact, we can, we can look to do that. The expected move, everything's stacked and positive, looking good. So if you're going to make a play for Friday, are you going to expect us to go to run higher or lower at this point? Based upon everything that you see on this, on this screen, notwithstanding the fact that uh, I think things are overdone, uh, but you're almost at a new high. You're well above the 21 EMA. Everything's MACD, stochastics, RSI pointing higher. Your squeeze is firing. And then when we take a look here, everything looks good to keep moving higher. There's no reason to think that we're going down. Now, doesn't mean it won't go down. Very likely. We've had several winners on these. Uh, but... Uh, I took one off today, and I'm going to show you the uh, the ins and outs of that trade. Uh, so this has been something we we're doing on a weekly basis as well, uh, and it has been so far, which it's hard to go wrong. It's hard to it's hard to actually suck uh, when the market goes higher when you're betting on these things. Uh, so we had a 100% winner. Um, and actually 104 percent if you want to know the exact uh, so i'm going to post the closing of this fly and i'll let you know that it was good trade all right so we are going to sell to close and just give me a moment while i'm trying to update the alerts. All right, so here's what we're doing on SPY. Taking a look, where do, where do things, where do you think things are right now? And then let's go trade. And I'll give you an idea of what that trade looks like. Uh, but we're typically going to go out two days. And this is what we did before. And let's take a look. So where what's the expected move in two days? Uh, so it looks like it's about $3, right? So uh, implied volatility is still super low. A $3 um, expected move. Uh, and again, you can find expected move as well by selling the uh, at the monies. Uh, if we take a look at the tw probably the 28s. Uh, so 266, something in that neighborhood. So we're really around that $3 move. Uh, so we're really at a $3 move. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out three bucks from here, which is going to put us at really the 431. That's going to be the body of our fly. We're going to go two down and we're going to go two up uh, on this. And that's our trade. Uh, so uh, normally we're putting these on for somewhere between 40 to 50 cents uh, on average. Now we're going to skew this thing bullish uh, because everything that we saw on these charts said, I think we still go higher. Now, could be wrong. We'll be wrong one of these times. Uh, so let's go back in here. So this is the trade we're going to look to put on. I'm going to put this trade on in just a moment. Um, and uh, you can scale it however you want to, depending on your buying power size. Uh, I've been doing uh, a small size on these, like four, four contracts at a, at a time, just to get the feel of it. Uh, but you know, four contracts at a time is giving me another 200 bucks a day, three days a week. Is that a lot of money? No. Am I risking a lot? No. I'm risking... Uh, what uh, a, a hundred and you know, I'm risking 200 bucks 
to make 200. Uh, now we could pin that strike today and I sold early, which I shouldn't have, but I did. Um, 428 was our was our center, or I'm sorry, 429 was the center strike. Uh, and we did the 427, 429. So we're like a, do, a little over a dollar in, but again, take the money and run. I guess I'll suffer with a 100% winner uh, in two days. But this is the trade we're going to look to do. 42 cents is what we can get in for. Uh, so that's what we'll look to put on uh, for today in SPY. Uh, we'll do another 2 DTE trade. And again, I'm looking at a $3 move. So we centered at the 431. We got the 439. Uh, 433 wings uh, on this one and just having some fun uh, with these and I can probably put it on for about 42 cents right now so I'll let that thing percolate maybe 43 cents might have to walk it a tad uh, we'll see but that's how we construct those trades and then on Friday we'll do Monday which Monday's closed so we'll have to do Tuesday which will be a 4 DTE trade um, as well so let's we'll see how that all goes um, as we, as we wander through things um, here. Okay, so uh, I think I've gotten most everything VIX. So we're gonna take a look at VIX. So VIX is down under 16 again uh, today. Uh, I'm gonna look to put a new VIX vol spread on and what that will be is, uh, let's go to VIX. And we're gonna go out somewhere around 50, 60. Man, there is no real 50, 60. Um, I'm gonna grab the, uh, do the 48 on VIX. It's on the short side of where I wanna be. So you have a couple options on these VIX ball spreads. Um, so on the VIX ball spread, I'm going to go somewhere. Let's take a look. I might buy the 30, sell the maybe 50s. I may go more than that. So yeah, 80 cents. Uh, so I might buy the 30, sell the 50. Um, now, obviously, are we going to uh, to 30? Mm, it could happen. It's happened earlier this year. We're at extreme lows, um, but this is just an extreme trade. And the reason I put this on is I'm really just looking to hedge the portfolio and it's a low cost trade. Uh, we just got filled on Peloton uh, for 100% plus winner. So I'll post that in a minute. Uh, and I'm waiting on my spy butterfly for Friday to fill. Uh, so VIX vol trade, uh, the 3050 might be good. 3060, you could even do that one. Uh, and so there's, if you wanna be a little bit more adventurous, you can certainly tweak this down to 25. I could do the 2550, maybe the 2545. Uh, I don't want to spend a boatload uh, on it. I'm looking for an extreme mood, not a slow get there uh, type of thing. So uh, I, I kind of liked that. You know, let's, let's stick 2545. Uh, let's stick to the 2545. It's a buck 20 debit. Uh, and then you can knock out as many shares you know, as, as you want on these things and see, uh, this is probably not going to give me the, the right amounts uh, on here, but I might risk um, 600 to make $9,000 uh, on this uh, on this trade. So uh, small risk, okay, small risk, six bucks times 100, 600 bucks to make what? $9,000. Now, am I going to make $9,000 on this? Probably not. Am I probably going to lose 600 bucks? I hope so. Uh, because a hedge is only something that's rarely, uh, if ever used, 90% of hedges die a quiet death and no one ever goes to their funeral. Uh, but this is one option. The other option, and this is also going to be interesting. So the other option is I could pay for this thing. So maybe I could use the 17... 1713. Uh, so if I sold, let's do the same amounts. I could also sell the 1713 and drop it down to uh, an even less expensive trade uh, now. So now my cost is a hundred bucks, okay, to make $10,000. 
um, on this thing. Um, so now there's some additional risk on it. Uh, you know, obviously if this thing just soars, uh, let's take a look um, at where we are. But uh, you know, take, taking a look now, it's really a, uh, a, a synthetic trade. If I take these off, I delete the whole trade and start again. Uh, I can just start the whole thing. Uh, I think I ended up with the 25, 45. Okay, so there was my trade. Just taking a look at this thing on the analyze tab. Uh, that looks funky. Dang it. Uh, it's not exactly my thrill. So what I'm not sure exactly what I did on this particular one. Uh, but as uh, as the VIX draw, or as uh, you know, obviously as VIX rises, uh, you know it's going to be worth quite a bit. And if we add those other ones, I did do it right, and I was uh, thinking of something completely different. If we sell the 17, we could actually sell the 16. So if you're uncomfortable, go four wide. So 16, 12. Right. Um, so if I sell the 16, 12, as long as we stay above the 16, uh, we're, we're okay. So we're still, we're spending 60 bucks to make 1900 uh, on it. Now, obviously, if we multiply this out and we go five of each of these and go a little bit bigger, I'm hedging my overall portfolio. So yeah, now I am spending 300 to make $10,000 if the market you know, if VIX just spikes and the market's going to hell in a handbasket, uh, we can see how that is going to play out. And then as we analyze it, uh, you know, as we go down, there's a, a spot where we'll, you know, we're going to plateau, plateau out. Oops, I think that's our spy. So spy just got filled. So that's one way of going as well is that, hey, we're good to up to a certain point uh, on that if, we, uh, if the market continues to drop. Uh, but if the market uh, continues to go up or if VIX you know, rises, fine. If VIX just continues to crank. But do we really think VIX is going to go and stay below 16 forever? So up to you whether you want to put that um, the other piece on. Uh, you certainly can do that, but I will probably drop another VIX vol spread on. Uh, and if you want, you can sell the puts to pay for it. Uh, so that's one thing that you can do uh, on that. All right, let's uh, hit the last two stocks. Man, we are at an, over an hour. We got to cut this out. Uh, all right, so workhorse here in a squeeze uh, right now, uh, or I'm sorry, no, not in the squeeze, but uh, well, yeah, you're in the squeeze, starting to move higher. Moving average is not all stacked, but looks pretty good. And we sold the workhorse um, butterfly on this thing. So we did the 16, 20, 22. So we don't always do butterflies, but when we do, sixteen. Oh, are you kidding me? Um, okay. So we have got a butterfly. Uh, here on Workhorse, we have nine more days. We're inside the fly itself, so we are profitable uh, on that fly uh, so far. And then looking at uh, Walmart, uh, Walmart, we have the uh, 141, 140 call in outspread. And man, it looked like that thing was dead to right dead. And then all of a sudden, bam, Walmart's up to 141 almost. So we just went from a complete throw it out, trades a loser, to wow, there's life. And we got a, we got a shot at this thing. In fact, it's already profitable today. So we went from a complete loser uh, to a very possible winner. And if we get over 141 and stay there, um, we got an in-out trade winner on Walmart. So I hope that makes sense. I hope this explains a bunch of stuff. Uh, today, I know I went a little bit long. Igor, I don't know if you want to jump in. Anything you guys want to cover? Gabe, 
uh, Captain Jones, anybody, if you want to jump in, you can. Uh, and then XLY, we're just continuing to, this is, the, this is one of the most profitable things we've done all year. So if you guys want to jump in, have at it. Uh, we continue to uh, do a poor man's covered call on this. We own the 140 calls, which are so far down here, you can barely see them. Uh, so we own those. We're selling those. It's all good. Nicely profitable trade. We already covered it earlier today. And I'm not adding much more. I just added the SPY trade for today. I'll do the MES trades for today. And I'll put the VIX uh, trade on. But it's a nice profitable day for us. And I don't need to go chasing a bunch of other symbols out here trying to figure out what's going to work um, and what's not. So uh, take a look. And, and applied materials, I still really like it. I'm trying to behave myself and not put a trade on. Uh, in applied materials, but I really think that that's a super um, looking trade uh, on it. So uh, there you go. Igor, anything you guys want to cover? If anybody's still awake. Uh, and I'm, not, I'm here. I'm here. So I just, I was just looking um, at, um, you know, whether you were talking uh, about the VIX, I was looking at the VIX term structure and to see if there is a way to put on the trade with very little, if any, risk um, out in September. But what I was looking um, at, it was two things. One, uh, the VIX option, as we know, or we should know, uh, they are not priced based on cash VIX reading. So the VIX that we usually look at, which is currently trading at um 1594 the options for vix are not priced off of 1594 um vix options are priced off of uh, vix future contracts and right now september vix is at around i think 20 so september vix is at $20.90 so either the cash vix is going to rise to that level or September contract is going to decay towards where wherever um, the cash VIX is. And you can look at um, uh, the VIX future contract settlement prices and find the lowest reading you can find in recent history. And in my sense, um, I think that selling uh, VIX puts naked, right? You need to, one, you need to understand how selling um, naked options work, but selling puts under or close to the lowest readings on the VIX settlement is probably a safe bet, right? VIX is not going to go to zero. I don't think. If it does, we're all out of business. Um, but VIX is probably going to go as low as maybe, you know, 13, you know, we had a reading of like 14 and change yesterday, but it was intraday and not really sure what that was all about. But as we can see that, you know, right now the market is not pricing in a whole lot. And this is a good time to start to consider putting on um, some sort of um, hedges uh, that will give you exposure to an increase in overall market volatility, implied volatility and realized volatility. So looking, um, here's one idea that um, I kind of came up with um, and I'm gonna try to go through it and uh, please do ask questions if it doesn't make sense uh, for any reason. Uh, but I'll try to go pretty slow and um, hopefully everybody's gonna follow along. So the idea is um, to use September expiration cycle. Uh, that's 77 days out. We know that the VIX right now out in September is at around um, just under 21, even though cash is um, at around 16. So my idea is to sell the 14 puts. In other words, I am betting that the VIX is not going to settle under 14 um, at, uh, uh, on September expiration. So selling 14 puts and using that premium 
to buy as many um, out of the money or at the money um, call spreads, which will give me um, an upside exposure to the VIX or to implied volatility out in September with very little to no downside risk. The real risk here is that you know you have to put up um, margin to sell the 14 put naked, right? And the real risk is if VIX is at zero and you sold a 14 put, right? You are on the hook. You are on the hook for 14 times 100. You're on the hook for $1,400 for every one put. That is if the VIX goes to zero, you get cash settled, you, you, you owe $1,400 for every one um, 14 put that you're selling naked. Um, odds of VIX settle, uh, settlement at zero, very unlikely. So I think it's a pretty safe bet selling the 14 put naked. You just have to um, understand that you will have to put up. And probably the best way to plan for risk is you know, do it as in cash secured. So put up $1,400 for every one put that you're going to sell. So if you sell, you know, five of those puts at $1,400 a piece, you got to put up $7,000. Now you don't have, you know, the broker is not going to hold, you know, $7,000, but you should have at least that in your account so that you don't have to liquidate other things if you do end up in a margin call. So that's, kind of your planned risk is $7,000. You're probably not going to use all of it right away. Um, assuming you have a margin account and your broker will only require you to put up, you know, a fraction of that $7,000, um, which, you know, based on what um, um, Option at Explorer is currently calculating, they have a margin requirement to sell um, five of the 14 puts naked around $700. So, which is about... Ten um, percent of the notional value of that contract, right? Five times fourteen hundred is seven thousand dollars. Optional Explorer thinks that uh, your broker will ask you to put up at least seven hundred dollars, which is ten percent of the seven thousand dollars, which would be required if you were to do this as a cash secured um, put sale. So, step one: selling the put naked, right? There's not a lot of premium. They're going for about 15 to 20 cents. Now we can use premium that we collect here to buy some kind of um, out of the money. Like if you think the market is going to completely explode and there's a chance that the VIX is going to be, you know, at 25 or higher. So maybe you can buy a 2025 call spread, right? 2025 call spreads going for about a dollar 20. So selling five of the 14 puts is not quite enough to cover all of the premium that you would have to pay for the 2025 call spread. So you end up with a small loss if the VIX um, in September on settlement, if the VIX is between 14 and 20, right? VIX is at 20 right now in September. So if the VIX kind of um, gravitates towards, you know, if, if the VIX is at still at 16 in September expiration and um, you have a chance of losing about 30, maybe $35 for one um, combo, which is selling five $14 puts and buying one uh, 20, 25 call spread right? You'll have a loss of about between 30 and $35. But if the VIX is north of 25, you'll make the $5 spread here minus the 30 or $35. So you can, you know, call that about uh, $470 or so. So you're technically not assuming that, you know, VIX is going to zero and you will lose, you know, seven grand, even though, you know, that's, that's your um, absolute risk is. The way I look at it, my risk here is that if the VIX is somewhere between 14 and 20, I'm out 35 cents or $35, right? And then so my risk 
is $35, but my potential reward is over $400. So that's kind of like a one, one to 10 risk reward, right? And the odds of this trade making a penny or more based on current implied volatilities and, you know, is relatively low. There's only about a 20 or 25% um, chance that the VIX is going to be above the break even, which is 2035 at September expiration, which is 77 days away. You can't be upset if you lose the $35 here, right? This is a hedge. This is an insurance policy. When you buy a car insurance policy, you don't get upset for writing a check to Geico because you don't expect to collect on that policy, which means you're not going to total your car, right? So you have to plan on losing the $35. But if we see a move, something um, like we saw, you know, March of last year, which is also very unlikely right now based on what the markets are pricing in. If we do, and that move kind of came out of nowhere. If we see something close to that, or if we see a 10% correction in the market, which we have not seen since the March of last year, there's a very good chance that the VIX is going to rise above 20 and if we just look back at where VIX was, um, was it two weeks ago on Friday? The quad witching and the market had a decent down move and the VIX was over 20 or 21 or whatever it was. So 20 is not too far away. Um, it, it looks and it feels like it's, you know, it's, it's far away, but it isn't. And I think that this is a decent bet if you wanted to get some long exposure to the VIX. Buying VIX calls is kind of a difficult um, game to play for me, at least. Um, I would rather buy a call spread, but I also don't want to um, pay too much for it. Or I would rather sell something that is a very high probability outcome, um, such as um, selling the 14 puts naked. In my opinion, um, VIX settlement under 14 is very, very unlikely. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? No. Or not as, not as high a probability as even the market is pricing in. So that's one idea. Um, you can get extra fancy. And if you wanted to cover the $35 outlay, which is between 14 and 20, you can maybe do like an upside broken wing butterfly uh, in the VIX. So you have a $5 call debit and maybe do a $3 call credit spread, right? So this could cover all of your risk on the downside. So as long as the VIX is above 14, you have nothing to worry about. You have to put up some money for it, but there's a very good chance that you will not end up in a margin call. You will not get um, smoked in this trade because I do not believe that VIX could go much lower than um, 14 um, than the 14 mark. And on the upside, if the VIX does explode higher, you don't have any upside risk. You get a really nice bonus if the VIX is above 20 and somewhere around 25. And then if we blow through 28 to the upside, you still don't have any risk. You just won't make as much. We got a question. Where do I see VIX? Where do I see VIX future value? Um, I use um, VIXcentral.com. Let me share this. So if you go to VIXcentral.com, you will see a um, um, you will see a graph that will um, show you different readings of the VIX future contract for different months. So for example, July, and let's see if I can share this. Give me one second.
I think I'm sharing the um, VIX Central. You guys see the VIX Central on? Do you guys see my screen? I'm sharing VIX Central, um, the website. Okay, so this is VIX Central. This is what I use to look at um, um, VIX futures. And we can see that July contract right now is at 1790, which is 20 days away. August contract is at um, 1970 which is 48 days away. September contract is at 2093, which is uh, 76 days away. And the question is, how do you use it? Um, this is not, well, um, it's not an estimation of VIX value. This is where the VIX future contract is trading right now. Now, don't quote this, you know, I'm not sure if this is real time, tick by tick, you know, quotes, but um, if you look at the VIX and you look at, uh, the VIX future, which is forward slash VX, and you look at different expiration or different um, months, you will see fairly close readings for July, August, September, October, and they have them listed out to um, Feb of next year. So this is what the market is anticipating the VIX to be at in the future. We don't know either the cash VIX is going to move towards these prices or these prices will move towards, but at some point on settlement, both will, um, both will be equal. Meaning that, you know, the cash VIX today is at 1596. Um, July VIX future is at 1785. On the day of expiration of this VIX future contract, these two are going to be equal, which means that either the cash VIX is going to rise or the VIX future contract is going to get sold, right? And when there's more sellers than buyers, the prices are going to decrease eventually. And these two are going to align. And then um, they go through a process of um, um, option settlement based on um, um, based on um, the, uh, the, the VIX readings um, and the VIX settlement gets posted on the CBOE um, website. You could also find VIX settlement prices by typing in, uh, in Thinkorswim. I believe it's um, dollar sign VRO. That is the VIX settlement prices. And you can go back, you can. Um, use that ticker VRO to go back and see what was the lowest VIX settlement going back as you know as far as you know you can go back a couple of years. I believe the lowest we saw was under 10 and this was in like 2016. But for the most part I think that the low teens, you know, 14 is pretty low. We have not seen that in quite some time. Can I use this number when I place normal VIX option trade? Um, you can. I mean, the, the only reason why I use um, VIX Central to understand. So, for example, if I'm trading October, if I'm trading October VIX calls, right, and the cash VIX is at 16 and I'm buying a 17 call, well, I'm not buying an at the money call. In October, the VIX is at 21. If I'm buying a 17 call, Right? That call is like almost $4 in the money. And you can go and you can look at the price of those calls. Like you will notice that October VIX calls, the 17 line is worth at least $4, I think. I'll double check just, I mean, I'm not looking at these prices. I'm just guessing of what they should be. And if you see that they're not worth at least four, then maybe there's an edge. But so going out to October, October 20th, the VIX is at 21 and the 17 line is worth 580, right? So they're worth at least. So you would think that, um, you know, cash VIX is at 16 
why is the October 17 line, is it 585? Well, it's not necessarily time premium there. That's actually intrinsic value in those options. The 17 call has almost $4 of intrinsic value. So a lot of people don't really understand, right? It's 590. You have 580 by 590 bid ask. So a lot of times um, traders go and try to trade the VIX without really understanding how VIX options are priced in. And sometimes they think that, oh, selling the, you know, 17, it has so much time value. Let me sell it. But that you're not selling time premium. You're selling intrinsic values, which means that you're more exposed to directional move of the VIX future contract rather than time decay. And if the VIX just sits here and the, the implied volatility of the VIX future contract remains the same, you may end up sitting on a short call on the 17 line, wondering why you're not getting the theta. But, and the answer is because you didn't sell time premium, you sold intrinsic value of that contract. Right, so no dollar signs. Um, maybe they changed, maybe I made that up, but VRO is the ticker symbol for settlement for VIX. And you can go back, you know, a couple of years to see, you know, what was the low, so to speak. Or you can go back and you can do some, you know, um, very basic um, back testing. Look at every, you know, September or every October settlement for the past 20 years and then come up with an average number. You know, what's an average settlement price for the VIX around September? Assuming that, you know, um, every September or October is kind of similar to the year prior to it. And it doesn't always work that way, but if you um, go back far enough, maybe you can come up with some, with some sort of average number that's maybe is going to help you. But for the most part, you know, I just think that the VIX at 14 is relatively low, especially, you know, September and October. Um, after the summer, I believe that, you know, we can go back and check seasonality, but I think September and October are the least bullish months. And typically when market starts to coming out of the summer, quiet, you know, steady trading, we get a little more volatility in the marketplace. Yes, um, January 2018, we had stupid low VIX reading. And if you were around for February 2018, that VIX went to, I don't know, 30, or th this is when we had this, um, we had the um, volatility event where volatility markets blew up. And that probably had something to do with too many, um, too many market participants just selling um, VIX future contracts, selling any kind of uh, VIX options, selling a lot of premium because, you know, volatility was just on a very steady decline. And then a lot of those market participants got caught on the wrong side of the trade and they, they, they had to buy in, they had to cover their positions and, you know, buying brought more buying and they kind of ran themselves over. But, you know, I, I'm not speculating on a big move because of any kind of low VIX reading. I'm just saying that I think that 14 for September and October, historically, in relative terms, is, a, is, is, is on the lower end of, um, is on the, lower end of uh, the range. So that's why I would feel fairly comfortable selling the uh, 14 put naked. And I would use the premium. So if I sold five of those puts naked, I actually kind of like the idea of um, this is the trade that I shared. This is going out in September, selling five 14 puts naked to buy um, 20. 25, 28 call butterfly in the VIX. My only concern is VIX under 14 um, on September expiration. Anything other than that, I don't really have to worry about. If nothing happens and VIX is, let's say, at 17 or at 18 or at 19, you know, I'm going to make a very small profit. Um, obviously, this isn't going to give me 
as much protection as I may need if I have a, a ton of long um, delta positions and the VIX is rising as the market is selling off. But the, um, the uh, insurance really starts to kick in if the VIX is now over 20, which means the market is selling off pretty good. The only problem here is that if the market is really selling off and the VIX is really ri um, rising, um, I lose a lot of my uh, long delta in this trade because I have a short 25, 28. So you may want to wait to initiate the second part of uh, the butterfly. If you do get a big spike, then you can take advantage. And now you may be selling um, a wing in this butterfly to remove all of the downside risk and potentially um, get reversion back towards somewhere in the middle of this tent. Uh, by September expiration um, and profits from this trade could potentially offset some of the losses in your portfolio that you are trying to um, hedge. You know, this may be a little bit more advanced, but I hope this, um, I hope this um, makes you think a little bit more about how um, VIX options are priced you know, what they're uh, priced off of and um, some of the ways that you can use um, VIX options to um, build out positions that could potentially um, remove some of the downside pain or pain from um, a sharp increase in implied volatility in the markets. What else we got? Um, let's have a look. You guys have any questions? Any um, anything specific? Otherwise, I'm going to look at the Russell. Russell is it was down today. Now it's up slightly. Um, I'm just sitting here waiting for the market pullback which right now does not feel like it is going to, um, it's not going to happen anytime soon, but it only takes so much to um, make the market kind of move a little bit. And you know, all of a sudden, everybody's waiting for a pullback, pullback comes and everybody's yelling market in turmoil. And we know how that works. Um, let me hop over to, um, the Russell. And, you know, I, I was also kicking around a couple of different ideas about um, selling iron condors and um, doing some other structures where um, we take advantage of uh, option premiums, but premiums are, you know, relatively low. So going out too far, really, you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're taking on the time risk, you know, or, you know, the risk of being in the trade for X amount of time without any significant um, benefit, because when you sell option premium, you know, 60 days out, you're, you're in the trade for 60 days and options aren't decaying fast enough to pay you for the risk because you know, vol is already kind of low. But then any uptick in implied volatility in that expiration cycle, the Vega, short Vega, is going to replace any of that theta that you may benefit from. So it's kind of it comes it it becomes a very slow decaying trade, which will require a lot of patience. And if we do get a move to the downside and a quick spike in implied volatility, um, I would rather initiate a lot more trades then. But that's not to say that you can't put on the trade every single day. I think Tom King is displaying this very well that, you know, you could put on the trade, a short put or a short call, whatever it is that works for you. You can do that every single day, regardless of where implied volatility or uh, what you think might happen. Um, as long as you are aware of the risk and you understand um, where you need to 
adjust where you need to cut your losses. Um, all that could be a part of a profitable overall business. And I hope that Tom's going to um, wrap up all of his numbers and post on the spreadsheet. Um, I think there's a lot of good data that could be um, used to understand, you know, how certain strategies perform um, in different uh, market environments. So looking at the, um, this is um, Russell 2000 scaling income butterfly. And just to recap, um, we initiated this trade 28 days ago. Russell was trading at around 2290. We uh, put on a 70 by 60 put butterfly. If you want to see prices we paid, um, you can go over to mrtoptic.com and you go to uh, Income Navigator. There is a forum board where I post all of these trades and all adjustments um, as a thread, and you will see every step that was taken uh, in this trade thus far. But initiated tier one centered 2280 with a 70 point wing on the downside, 60 point wing on the upside. Russell moved higher uh, about three or four days later. We had initiated tier two. Uh, this was a 70 point wing to the downside, 60 point wing to the upside. And then we had a brief market pullback, which is right around uh, June 17th. Uh, we had scaled down back to tier one. We removed tier two. And then since then, we had one two, three, four, four up days in a row, which put us back into or back at the level where we needed to make an adjustment, which was last, uh, I don't remember if it was last Friday or a couple of days ago. Um, <coughs> a couple of days ago, this was on the 25th. Uh, we got into a point where I needed to add tier two to kind of keep the tent uh, near the price. And I chose to go with a 70 point wing to the downside and a 50 point wing to the upside to keep my net delta slightly positive. And where we are right now, scaled into two uh, layers or two tiers uh, with a net delta of about plus three. Um, we got short gamma and we have positive theta. We have 30 days left in this trade. Um, I mentioned this um, earlier this week that I'm not a big fan of um, adding a whole lot of new risk late in the trade. So I would consider adding to it. But once we start to get down to about 21 days, I don't, I don't, I no longer want to add to this trade. Maybe I would consider taking this trade off or managing as is and look to um, initiate another trade. This one is 30 days until expiration. We have a, uh, August uh, 31st, and then we have September. September is 79 days, so that's a little um, too far out. Uh, maybe there's going to be contracts between the uh, 31st of August and September 17th. So um, maybe in another 10 days, I would look to um, initiate another trade um, in the Russell. Instead of adding to this trade with you know 20 days to go, I would like to initiate a position with a little more time until expiration, um, which is going to give me a smoother T plus zero line. And I don't have to watch the trade as close versus adding more and more risk to a trade that's 20 days and then 14 days. Um, T plus zero line is going to get pretty um, steep and small day-to-day uh, -day changes are going to move my p &L a lot more. So I need to stay a little bit more um, aggressive or I have to stay on top of the trade a little bit more. And I don't necessarily want to do that. So that's, that's the reason why I would rather go out for a little bit more time instead of um, piling more risk on a trade that's kind of running short on time. That is on the Russell and on the S&P. We got a leftover trade in the S&P with 16 days to go. And we have a position that we took um, almost 
two weeks ago, um, as the market was pulling back, we took a position. This was on the 20 or on the, on the 18th. Uh, we took a position. This is a um, broken wing put butterfly um, centered what feels like a you know, pretty good distance away from where the market is right now. So we're at um, 3,900 with a 25 point wing to the upside and a 50 point wing to the downside. Uh, we took in a 280 credit and it is currently trading for about $1.25. So now we have 51 days to go. I'm just going to sit tight on it, wait. And, you know, if um, as long as um, S&P is not anywhere near um, 3925, 3900, I don't really need to do anything. I may consider adding to it if we do get a pullback. Um, if we get a pullback and this trade has too little time until expiration, instead of taking on more short gamma risk, I would look to initiate similar structure with more time until expiration. I will have more time. I will have um, probably more premium available, or I will be able to position my, the, the structure, the body of this butterfly will be further out of the money. So that's my idea for this trade. It's not a whole lot to do. We can get a little fancy here. And if we think that the market is going to pull back here, or if the upside is limited, we can go out and maybe add um, some kind of out of the money call spreads without having to put up any additional capital, right? We have, so this is a 10 lot. We have about $22,000 tied up in this trade. I can probably sell 10, 20 wides. Right, so if I go 10, 20, I can sell 10, 20 wide call credit spreads. And my margin goes to about 20,000. So I will reduce my margin. I will increase uh, net credit or total credit in this trade. But my delta will go from positive plus seven to minus 14. And if your outlook for the near term is... Um, um, that the market has limited upside or if the market is going to pull back. Now, this could potentially be a decent adjustment to boost your um, overall credit without taking on much of um, uh, additional risk. And so doing 20 wide, 10 of those did not equalize my risk on both sides. If I go 30 wide, not good either. I go 25 wide, there is no strike. Well, anyways, you understand that by selling a out of the money call spread, right? This will introduce upside risk, meaning that if S&P goes north of um, or above 4,500, there is risk to the upside. Whereas if we didn't add anything to it, S&P can go to, to a million and there is no upside risk. So by selling an out of the money call spread we are assuming upside risk but we get paid for that risk by collecting um about a dollar 80 that's what um 44 90 45 10 short call spread is currently going for so we'll boost our net credit by about 1800 dollars credit will go uh, credit will go from 2800 to 4600 with um, um risk in the trade being reduced by $1,800 that uh, we collect uh, by selling the uh, 4490, um, 4510. I'm gonna go back here. So question about Shopify. What do you see where it where it's going? Um, that is a great question, but we can look at a chart and try to understand. I'm not sure if um, um, Tom uh, covered um, Shopify, but he does go through an extensive list of uh, things that he's watching and uh, puts out a ton of um, great information. But um, Shop for me right now is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Right, it 
it it did make a uh, it did make a high at fifteen fifty two, and now at fourteen seventy, uh, the squeeze is kind of um, rolling over, meaning momentum is coming out of it. Um, on a smaller time frame, on a one hour time frame, it kind of flattened out and now starting to roll over a little bit. Uh, on a daily, it's just doing nothing. It's inside of the expected. Um, expected move range for this week we have the higher end at 1531.93 lower end of that range is 1415 um, you have a shop put butterfly centered at 1370 well well with the price 100 dollars above your short strike what, what about the wings if you have 200 point wings then you're okay if you have 50 point wings you're on the right side of your butterfly and if you have risk on the upside well that butterfly is probably not having a good time right now So one more thing, um, we have about 10 minutes and I'm going to let everybody go. So this is the uh, put butterfly. And um, I was just looking for some ideas to um, initiate a new trade. And I just want to kind of walk through the process of how I think about these trades, right? So just because, you know, I think the market is going to pull back doesn't mean that um, um, we should put on a bunch of uh, spreads or uh, a bunch of different positions um, that will favor uh, from a market pullback. We also want to understand, you know, what are we trying to achieve uh, by placing our trades? And, you know, I always give credit to um, Option and Explorer for helping me visualize my risk or at least um, seeing my um um, risk profile before I put the trade in so that I understand where will my trade really make money, where will I have to make an adjustment, where I might run out of time. And um, I just want to kind of take you through the process of um, setting up a potential trade in the S&P. Um, this is going to be, you know, again, um, I have been expecting some kind of um, pullback a minor pullback a pullback to a some sort of you know i posted yesterday that um s&p right now is about 50 points away from a 10-day moving average right so if you take an average closing price over the past 10 days which is two weeks s&p right now is 50 points above that and with um an atr and spx right now around 32 um, it'll take quite a bit to, to get down just to retest the 10 day average closing price, right? It's probably going to feel a lot worse than it really is, but it's not that big a deal. 50 point pullback will only retest a 10 day moving average. That is not a big deal. Um, 20 day right now is at 42.41. Right, so a 10-day moving average right now on the SPX is about 40 points away. 20-day moving average is about 50 points away. And a 50-day moving average is about 90 or 95 points away. Right, a retest of any one of those key moving averages is not a terrible thing, um, but um, it's going to... Um, feel like the market is completely falling apart and that's only because we've been in a very tight slow grind higher um, that when the market reminds everyone that um, risk happens really fast um, a pullback to either one of those moving averages is going to feel a lot worse than it really is but in any case if we wanted to play 
say um, we go out to August, right? We'll use, and if you already have August positions on, please be aware that, you know, you may be using strikes that might overlap with your existing positions. So be aware and you don't want to get into a position that has overlapping legs, if you will, because then I, I get questions, you know, people saying, hey, I had a put and I put on a new position. I actually sold it. What's happening now because I lost track. Right. So Option Explorer definitely helps me solve that issue. But the idea, right, I always start with, you know, what am I trying to accomplish? Like, what, what, what am I looking for? Let's assume, right, and this is just an assumption, I could be wrong, and I probably will be wrong. But let's assume that we are going to come down to retest that area where the, uh, you know, a 50 day moving average is right now, right? 50 day moving average is at 4200. Okay, so we're going to assume that S&P is going to retest 4,200. I want to buy a, um, I want to buy a put debit spread that's going to max out at around, at around 4,200. So 4,200. Where are you? 4,200. There you are. So 4,200 is a 33 delta put right now. So I'm selling one of those. I'm going to buy a put 25 points above that. All right. So now I have a 25 point wide put debit spread. And this put debit spread is currently going for $5.45, maybe five fifty. Okay. So what happens here, I have a 70% probability of this put spread not making any money at expiration, right? which means that I have an implied probability of profit for this spread around 30%. Now, I don't want to lose $5.40 if we don't retest, but I definitely want to make some money if we do retest. So what I want to do next is I want to you know, if I'm looking for a pullback, I'm looking for a pullback, but not a crash, right? I don't think the market is going to crash. I think the market is just going to pull back. And it's going to pull back to retest where the, you know, 50-day moving average right, right now is, or around 4,200 on the S&P. So now I want to sell further out of the money, put credit spread that's going to cover maybe most, if not all of my upside risk, but I also want to maintain a slightly negative delta in my trade. Now, this might get a little more, um, uh, not confusing, but it, it, it's going to require a little more flexibility. Like if you're only going to do one contract, this may not work for you. You can use SPY because SPY is, you know, one tenth of the um, SPX contract. So you can do multiple contracts with SPY. But as long as you understand the idea, you can use SPY to model similar trade uh, or tweak this trade to whichever way it'll work best for you. So the idea here is to buy a 25 point wide put debit spread um, around where I think or where I suspect the market may go over the next 51 days. And now I want to sell a further out of the money, put credit spread to cover my upside risk or to, I want to sell a 50 point wide, right? So this is a 25 point wide put debit spread. I want to sell a put credit spread that's going to be 50 points wide and it needs to cover my debit that I am paying for the 25 point wide put debit spread. So maybe I'll go out to somewhere around a 10 delta or close to it. So I'm looking, so maybe I'll go to a 13 delta, right? 39.50. I want to, I like to use these um, um, quarter strikes, right? So either 25, 50, 75, or hundreds. Um, I'm going to look to sell a 50 point wide 
put credit spread. So selling a 3950, buying a 3900. All right, so doing one of these only covers about half or so of what I'm paying for the 25 point wide um, put debit spread. So doing one is not enough. Maybe I'll do two. Two may be too many, right? So one and two, it, it's a little um, difficult to, to set up a trade. But if I was to do um, slightly higher number of contracts, both on the debit and on the credit um, spread for this trade, I can maybe do eight debit spreads and nine um, credit spreads. Again, my goal is to keep my net delta slightly negative, even if I have a little bit of upside risk. I don't mind some upside risk because I can potentially eliminate my upside risk by selling some further out of the money call spreads to compensate for that risk on the upside. Right, I have 51 days. There's plenty of time to figure out how to eliminate my upside risk. But for right now, what I want to do is I want to set up a trade that is going to benefit from a pullback into that area where the 50 day moving average is right now or 4,200, which is, you know, S and P at 42.95. You know, we're talking just shy of 100 handle pullback. Now, if it happens in one day, it's not going to be as much fun, but if we do sell off 100 points over the next, you know, 45 days, which is going to be a kind of a drift lower, we can look at T plus zero 45 days from now, right? We're really going to, and especially if the move to the downside happens without a whole lot of volatility increase, right? This trade is going to really uh, come alive. Doesn't look like much on day one, but 45 days into the future or something close to it, right? This trade is really going to, even if we, you know, take volatility up 10 points, right? A pullback to um, 4,200, maybe 4,190 or so, you know, this trade is going to really, um, is really going to pay off. Let me see what this would look like if I bump um, the number of contracts. So maybe I'll do... If I do seven 25 wides and I do nine of the credit spreads. So minus nine. That's not a terrible looking, right? So I have net short five or six delta, right? My T plus zero is kind of pointing lower or on the upside, I have short delta. So any further move to the upside isn't going to help me. Any move to the downside is going to help me, but that's probably going to be muted by an increase in implied volatility, at least in the first um, couple of weeks. But here's the idea, right? We hold this for maybe 45 days and look at that T plus zero line 45 days from now. All right, so I don't mind assuming upside risk. Now, clearly, if, you know, if we have a move to the upside over the next 45 days, what's my loss? I could lose 3% on um, capital that's tied up in this trade. You, know, you can use this as a kind of a hedge idea to a certain extent, right? If the market rallies and, you, and, and this position will lose 700 bucks, probably have something in your overall portfolio that's going to benefit from a rise in, uh, in um, the price of uh, S&P 500 by, um, you know, 125 points, All right? But if the market falls, your longs may take a hit, but this trade is really going to, you know, it's not going to, uh, you know, triple your account and it shouldn't, but profits from this particular um, position could reduce or compensate for some of the losses that you may be experiencing 
with S&P pulling back 150 points over the next 45 days. Right, so I'm not saying, look, these are the strikes that we're going to use, or these are, oh, you know, this is the number of contracts that I'm going to do. I just want to kind of take you through the steps that I would go through, you know, modeling this trade, right? And I always start with, what am I trying to accomplish? Where do I think the market goes? And where would I make a profit if what I think is going to happen, in fact, does happen? So if I think that we're going to pull back to 4,200, I want to position, I want to build a trade that's going to benefit um, from such move. And if we go more than what I think we're going to do, this trade you know, doesn't really, over, and, that, and that's over the next 45 days or 43 days in this case, right? I don't really have any Delta problems until we're below 4,100 which is 200 points away, right? So I don't have any Delta issues on the way down. Whereas if I did a regular iron condor and the market pulled back 150 points, an iron condor will be in a lot of trouble. So this is something to be considered. At first, I, I, you know, I start with negative five or six delta, and my delta stays negative, right? We can pull back to 4,200, and I still carry negative delta. My delta doesn't flip positive until about right, 4,160, which is about 140 points away from where we are today. And um, if, if, right, and it's a big if, the market continues to grind higher, and I think that, you know, further upside is limited now, and if the market continues to grind higher, and I think that, you know, upside definitely is becoming a low probability trade, right? Let's say S&P at 4,300, I think that more upside is unlikely. Now, I could be wrong, and we can rally another 50 handles, right? So maybe at 43.50, I think, all right, we're definitely due for a pullback. I can start to maybe initiate some kind of um, out-of-the-money um, call spreads, collecting a credit. So maybe I'll start with, like, selling five, um, 20 wides and see what that looks like, right? If I did that from the get-go, I already eliminated my upside risk. But if I wait to 43.50, and, you know, right now this um, call spread is going for about two bucks, and it has about a net positive delta of two. So if S&P is going to move up 50 points, we could assume that this spread is going to go for about $3, All right? So selling this um, call credit spread will remove my upside risk. It's going to introduce risk to the upside if we go past my short strike, which is, you know, further out of the money. And if we come back in and still come down and retest, maybe we don't reach the $4,200 level that I'm initially looking for, but I don't really care too much about it because I no longer have that risk to the upside. So I'm okay if we're somewhere between 42.25 and you know, whatever my short strike on the, um, on the upside is. And if we do come back inside of this area between 4,200 and um, 39.50, I will get a really nice bonus. And we can see what this looks like 45 days from now or 43 days. Right, so I don't really have a lot of trouble to the upside. I may be at a drawdown if the market continues to you know, grind in the way it is grinding right now. But if we do get a pullback, I'll have a pretty decent profit inside of this area, which is between 4,200 and 3,950.
I hope this makes a little bit of sense. If it doesn't, you can always ask questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to wish everyone a good rest of the day. Uh, markets are closed on Monday, so we have tomorrow and Friday. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, thanks for taking the time to join us today. And um, I will be back on Friday. Take care, everyone.